Chapter 8, Functional Analysis and Behavioral Diagnostics. What's causing the problem? As wonderful as dogs are, sometimes they have behavior problems. Examples include aggression towards other animals or people, nuisance barking, begging, jumping up on people, destroying property by scratching or chewing, car sickness, shyness, hyperactivity, fearfulness, house soiling, chasing cars, stealing food or objects, sexual mounting, whining, pulling on the leash, running away, excessive sniffing, digging, phobias, and eating the feces of other dogs, coprophagia. Some behavior problems are really needs more training problems. Pulling on the leash is a good example. However, when the problems are severe, dog owners frequently turn to behavioral consultants in search of solutions. Functional analysis and behavioral diagnostic, diagnostics are the procedures used to assess these kinds of behavior problems. Caring about the causes of behavior. Historically, the treatment of human behavior problems, the main focus has been the topography of the behavior. In early treatment models, the function of those problem behaviors was not always considered. If there was a common criticism of the behavior approaching to treatment behavior problems in the 1970s, it was that behaviors didn't spend enough time looking for the causes of behavior. Using B.F. Skinner's model, Behaviors looked at antecedents, behaviors, and consequences. In fact, in the 1960s and 1970s, some behaviorists were conducting workshops for school teachers, openly said that causes of behavior didn't matter. What mattered was fixing the problem. Others pointed out that behaviors could be treated even if their cause was unknown. Topography refers to the physical characteristics of a behavior, such as biting or aggression. By the 1980s, behavior analysis was widely used in the therapeutic settings for people with developmental disabilities, such as mental retardation and autism. In many of these therapeutic settings, there was an increased emphasis on understanding the causes of behavior. By the late 1980s, behavior analysis were using a procedure developed in human services service work called functional analysis, a process of analyzing the interaction between the environment and a behavior. Functional analysis is relevant to solving an, an individual's behavior problems, whether the individual is a person or a dog. Functional analysis. In human settings, much of the functional analysis research was done with individuals who engage in self-injurious behaviors, such as biting themselves or headbanging. Researchers working with these individuals discovered that people engaged in the same behavior had different reasons for doing so. Some developmentally delayed children who were hand beggars Hand headbangers were trying to get attention, Other were, others were trying to avoid doing tasks. Understanding the function of these behaviors was critical in developing effective treatment strategies. Behavior problems in humans or animals can be related to a variety of functions. In both humans and dogs, the functions of a problem behavior can be 1. To get attention, 2. To get reinforcers such as food or toys, 3. To escape or avoid a situation such as training or following commands, four, to get sensory reinforcement, and five, to communicate needs such as need for exercise or to go outside. Different dogs can exhibit identical behaviors, yet the behavior of each dog may be completely different functions. Understanding the function of each dog's behavior gives the trainer a way to determine the most appropriate way to solve the, the problem. Functional analysis is a way of looking at the opponent operant variables that are related to behavior, knowing the function of a problem behavior can help determine an appropriate solution. Two dogs, two different functions. Jet was a Labrador retriever whose owner was teaching him to heal. In a business-like manner, he'd say heal and start walking. Before going to, too far, Jet would begin dancing around, jumping and trying to get in front of, the, in front of her. He would eventually fall on his back and expose his belly for petting. Topper was an English Springer Spaniel whose owner was teaching him to go out, an advanced obedience exercise where the dog is sent away from the handler and signaled to sit. At the beginning of the lesson, Topper would lean against his owner and turn around. He would eventually fall on his back and expose his belly for petting. Many trainers would recommend the same method of dealing with both dogs. However, a functional analysis revealed that falling on the back and exposing the belly served very different functions for these dogs. Jet was a hyper pet me, pet me, pet me kind of dog whose owner rarely kept her hands away from him. When he was required to work for the first time, he began these disruptive behaviors. They always resulted in attention from his owner. You silly boy, what am I going to do with you? She'd laugh and say as she petted him and played with him. Jet learned that his behavior would result in attention. 
When his owner was instructed to ignore Jet's disruption and heavily reinforce the healing with praise and food, the disruption stopped. He got his attention and in the form of playing, petting, and tummy rubs at the end of each training session. Topper's owner was new to obedience work at his level. She was not too sure of how to teach the go-out, and she was sending mixed signals to her sensitive spaniel. The first few times Topper engaged in disruptive behaviors, the owner ended the training session and started to play. Topper learned that disruptive and distractions were ways to escape training. In this case, ignoring the behavior would not have been a good solution. Topper simply wanted to avoid the training, and if the owner ignored him, he would have won the avoidance game. The solution in Topper's case was to continue the lesson, give reinforcement for close approximations to the behavior, and use gentle physical guidance as necessary. Physical guidance would probably not have been recommended for Jet, who was just trying to initiate physical contact with his owner. Functional Analysis of Canine Behavior Problems Function of the Problem Behavior Attention Examples of problem behavior, dog jumps up, increases activity, spins in circles, lies on its back, exposes belly, barks at owner, parades with toys or objects, nudges person. Procedures for addressing behaviors. Extinction of attention-seeking behaviors while reinforcing desired behaviors. Give desired attention following training sessions and at other times. Access to reinforcers such as food, toys, and bones. Dog is pushy, sniffs or nudges, owner's hands or pockets, jumps up to get food or toy, engages in fast, unprompted behaviors in rapid succession to get reinforced, steals toys or bones from another dog. Extinction of pushy behaviors while reinforcing desired behaviors. Use reinforcers to reward desired behaviors, add new reinforcers, increase access to toys, etc. if deprivation is a problem. Escape. Avoid a demand situation such as training or following commands. Dog is disruptive or acts silly, shuts down and does nothing, looks off in distance, doesn't pay attention, no response to commands. Extinction of silly behaviors, continue training, make tasks easier, reinforce gradually increased difficulty, start with short sessions and gradually lengthen, gentle physical guidance as needed, paired with reinforcement, evaluate and increase reinforcement value. Sensory stimulation. Watches other dogs walking down the street, sniffs other dogs, sniffs air where people have walked, tracks scents on the ground, watches objects motion, such as leaves falling from the trees, ignores commands. In training, remove distractors for beginning dogs. Reinforce attention to trainer. Gradually increase sensory distractors. Plan distracting training. Communicate, for example, biological needs. Barks, runs to an area, for example, to go outside, is pushy, nudging owner as in, I need to go outside. Reinforce legitimate communication, such as requests to go outside. The behavior of dogs is complex. When a dog nudges a person, one function of the behavior might be to communicate, as in, I need to go outside. The very same behavior might also have the function of getting attention, as in, hey, give me some petting. Functional analysis gives dogs trainers a way of examining operant learned variables related to behavior problems so they can develop appropriate solutions. When researchers and behavior analysts conduct a functional analysis, they collect data on the behavior, systematically manipulate the antecedents and consequences of the behavior, and repeat the conditions to determine, without a doubt, the function of the behavior. For example, if a behavior is thought to be reinforced by attention, alternating sessions would be conducted with and without attention to determine its effect on the behavior. You can use a functional analysis assessment, such as the functional analysis questionnaire, to identify variables controlling a dog's behavior. The functional analysis questionnaire is used for addressing behavior problems, such as aggression or excessive barking, rather than training problems. Functional analysis is a procedure that determines under which conditions a behavior problem occurs. Behavioral diagnostics, looking at the whole picture. Functional analysis is useful for explaining the operant variables related to a dog's behavior. Properly conducted, a functional analysis can identify such conditions as when behaviors are maintained by escape or when behaviors are affected by positive reinforcers, such as attention. However, when addressing and determining a treatment for a dog's behavioral problems, it is critical to be aware of the whole picture. That's where behavioral diagnostics come in. The term behavioral diagnostics was coined by David Piles and John Bailey. They recognized the need for a model that could identify all the possible variables related to the behavioral and introduced the technique in 1989 as an alternative to some less comprehensive approach for treating human
behavior problems. Functional analysis questionnaire for canine behavior. Owner's name, owner's address, phone, dog's name, breed, dog's age, sex, spayed or neutered, any formal training, what are the dog's reinforcers, describe the problem behavior. Antecedent, one, when, the, when does the dog's problem behavior occur? Where does the problem behavior occur? Who was present when it occurs? Are there times when the behavior is not a problem? What is happening just before the behavior? Can you bring on the behavior by doing something? Consequences. What usually happens immediately after the dog engages in the behavior? How do you react? Petting? Scolding? What do family members or observers do when the behavior occurs? Is the dog getting rewarded for the behavior? Is the dog getting out of doing something with this behavior? Piles and Bailey were asked to design a behavior program for a mentally handicapped client who was hitting himself in the face. Before designing such a program, they insisted that the client have a complete medical evaluation. In the course of the medical evaluation, it was discovered that the boy had a cyst the size of a golf ball in one of his sinuses. Treating his face hitting with a behavioral solution would have been inappropriate and unethical. There are many times when a dog's behavior problems will be related to factors that are not operant. Behavioral diagnostics provides a comprehensive approach for analyzing behavior problems that can be used to assess all variables that might be related to a dog's behavior problem. Behavior diagnostics takes into account the operant variables related to behavior plus genetics, medical status, and physical variables. Looking at all the factors. The genetics of the dog must be considered when addressing a behavior problem. To begin with, there are breed differences that cannot be ignored. One owner called to ask us how to treat their dog's hyperactivity. She described a dog that never stopped moving. It turned out the dog was a German short-haired pointer, and the owner had no yard, worked all day, and lived in an apartment. These pointers have been bred for centuries to run all day, quartering the field, looking for game birds. The dog did not have a behavior problem, nor was it hyperactive. It was simply behaving the way it had been bred to behave. Medical problems can also affect a dog's behavior. A dog that suddenly starts raiding the garbage or being pushy at the dinner table may have tapeworms. What appears to be a behavior problem is actually hunger related to a medical problem. Medications can also cause side effects that can cause changes in behavior. Physical variables must be taken into account as well when addressing behavior, problem, behavior, addressing behavior problems. A dog that is hot, tired, thirsty, or exhausted may not follow commands or work well in the obedience ring. Behavioral diagnostics is an approach well suited to analyzing the behavior problems of dogs because it is so important to consider the biological ver variables. Behavioral diagnostics for dogs. Categories of behavior and examples of behavior. Behavioral diagnostics determine the cause of problem behavior in order to apply the most appropriate treatment. Genetics. Breed-related behaviors such as terriers digging holes, border collies hurting other animals. Behavioral disorders that are inherited such as bad temperament. Self-stimulation. Chewing self or objects due to boredom. Running in circles. Operant variables. To get attention. To get access to reinforcers. Establishing operations. To escape or avoid a demand situation such as training, to get sensory stimulation, sniffing, to communicate a biological need, I need to go outside. Learning history, fear of people, animals, situations due to punishment or trauma, past history of abuse, past history of reinforcement for behavior such as aggression, lack of training, medical slash psychological causes, illnesses, Pain, discomfort, such as painful hips, can cause problems such as aggression, refusal, refusal to do tasks, medication side effects. Stress can also affect behavior, and there are many possible physical signs of stress in canines. They include panting, pacing, shedding, diarrhea and bowel movements, urination, licking the lips, coughing, sneezing, turning away, avoiding eye contact, trembling, shaking as if the dog were shaking off water, yawning, Sweaty paws, increased activity, decreased activity, scratching, spacing out. But medical questions are not the whole story. The history of reinforcement is a part of any behavioral diagnostics evaluation. Has this dog been abused? Has it had any unusual experiences under specific conditions? Is one person in the family reinforcing undesired behaviors? All the physical and behavioral factors must come together in order to get a really complete picture of why a dog behaves as it does. The last word on functional analysis. 
Functional analysis and behavioral diagnostics are two procedures that can be used to address canine behavior problems. Functional analysis looks at the conditions under which behaviors occur. Behavioral diagnostics provides a broader picture and looks at why problem behaviors are occurring in the first place. When dog trainers understand the cause of specific behavior problems, effective solutions can be implemented.